We've got some brand spanking new secret layer info for you. And then also we're going to catch up on Modern Horizons 2. These fetch lands, despite how fiercely you fought me in the comments, have started to dip down again. And I know, I know that prices can only go up, but here we are again, they're dipping and the video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Oh, no, that's not a $32.99 scalding tarn from Modern Horizons 2. It can't possibly be. Because a couple weeks ago, I had everybody yelling at me saying, Jake, you undersold the collector booster box. It's way more valuable than you are making it out to be in your review and now that we're past pre-release all of the fetch lands are getting bought again scalding tarn and misty rainforest are already back up to 40 dollars well that's crazy because on july 11th 2021 aka right now i'm looking at it but you know what this video doesn't need to be about all these fetch lands it really doesn't i'm not trying to make it about that it's not a big i told you so but i told you so you're looking at one of the few people that has not bought one of these Modern Horizons 2 boxes. I have not bought one box. I did buy some pre-release kits. I didn't buy it at 420.69. I didn't buy it at 400. I didn't buy them at 380. And I didn't buy them at 350. And you want to know what else? I didn't buy them today at 329.34. However the hell many there are in stock on Amazon. But I'm telling you, I'm and I'm still not buying them. I'm not buying this scalding tarn for $32.99. You know what? Let's catch up on the fetch lands. Anyway, I'm Jake with Jake and Jeweler Magic. If you enjoy these finance videos, click like and subscribe. Best way to support the channel with just the click of a button. And then we are going to talk about new hot secret layer news. Apparently, we are moving now past the stained glass planeswalkers. Oh, baby. And we have new, fun, promotional, alternate art exclusive semi-exclusive who knows how long it's going to be in the secret layer but yeah if you like this info click like and subscribe best way to support the channel with just the click of a button now let's uh let's finish this because i just want to touch on this one more time and i was joking around in the beginning of the video but i'm just showing you and i'm illustrating i, I had this feeling that this was going to happen when you put so many different variants and you satiate just a ton of demand which is excellent this is great for the game I'm not saying that these aren't going to go back up in price in the long term but one of the things that we speculated on in this channel was that the blue fetch lands, the bottom price for those, our target of entry would be between 30 and $35. And now I'm seeing it and I'm thinking we might even be able to go sub 30 on these. If people don't go and just buy all these out, what's happening right now is people are buying up the premium variants, the retros, the etched, uh, the foil variants, the extended variants. And they are, you know, this is the baseline variant. And this is great. This is amazing for the game. And I think it's going to go even lower. But let's go ahead and just go through these quickly because I want to look at each of the fetch lands and just see where they are. That way, historically, we could come back and we can look at this in the future. All right, we got a new listing here. Lowest price is an extended Misty, $34.99. It's pretty good. And I will admit, these prices did tick back up, but a lot of the time, like in the stock market, and again, nothing on this channel is financial advice, but you'll see like, you know, when a new set comes out, we're, we're gonna see a dip in these prices because there's more copies out there, demand is being met, and then sometimes you will see an uptick as all of that demand is being met, all of those cheap copies are being bought, and now, there are more copies than there is demand. So we're starting to see a nice correction on all of these cards. But you could see even a premium variant here of Misty Rainforest is even cheaper than the baseline variant, only by a cent. But I'm, I'm just showing you that right now it doesn't really matter, you know, the variant. I mean, now save retro and etched cards are going to have a premium. Obviously, Expeditions are going to have a premium. All of the uh, shiny variants and uh, foils are going to have a premium. We're in a really nice spot right now where we're starting to see a big correction on these fetch lands. Let's look at the ones that aren't blue. All right. I mean, this is fantastic. This is exactly what we wanted. I said that my target of entry would be below $30 for Verdant Catacombs, and we are now finally seeing that. Again, this is July 11th, 2021. 
so in in the moment and again you can go over to tcg player for brevity i'm using just ebay a lot of the time you'll see a heavy competition here everybody undercutting and then you also get pictures here which is one thing that i don't see all the time on tcg player and other sites are just like good pictures you can vet sellers and you can look for people with good feedback across different platforms but for me i really do like ebay and even though a lot of people say oh i get scammed on there all the time i'll tell you i've been using ebay for a very long time uh more than a decade i very rarely if ever have problems oh yeah this is great. My target of entry for Marsh Flats was 15 to $17. I'm seeing $19.95. So I still think this could go a little bit lower. I'm still bearish on these products. Again, uh, you know, with Amazon and everything that I was talking about earlier, we're seeing set boxes at 230. You can even find those those cheaper. I've seen a couple spots, but we're even seeing a correction on Time Spiral Remastered is down from 250 from a couple weeks ago, now down to 247, also seeing as low as $226. Commander Legends a little bit of an, an uptick, but you can even find, you know, just any recent collector product. You have Jumpstart on here for 107, even though Jumpstart was apparently going to the moon. So Amazon is really playing like a, it's, it's awkward, right? This is very weird, very bad for the LGS. LGS can't match these prices and LGS shouldn't be expected to match these prices, but this is what happens when you have two big businesses, you know, they get in bed together and now, you know, Amazon and Hasbro, it's like, yeah, match made in heaven. We're just going to send you pallets of this shit and people can order it for pennies on the dollar or not pennies on the dollar, but for, you know, really nice margins compared to the LGS, you know, it's like, let's see what the price per pack is right now. Yeah, so this is coming out just, and this is before tax, but this is coming out to just over $27 a pack, which, you know, I've seen these packs as high as $40 at the local game store. You can even see they're selling individual packs here for $40 on Amazon. This is getting closer to an entry point for me, but still, I do think that the product could go lower. Modern Horizons is, too has kind of been a testament of like what I can expect moving forward from MTG products until there's a major change. If every product is going to have a collector booster attached to it and every product goes to Amazon in mass, like I'm talking like tons and tons of product, it's going to be very difficult for me to ever want to buy something at a premium right out the gate. I, I think I'm, I'm likely never going to do that again. Uh, it doesn't really matter at this point what it is. Uh, I've seen the mix, Mystical Archive and Strixhaven. I've seen all of the Constellation stuff and Theros. I've seen the... I've been excited for the extended art cards, the box toppers that came out of Ultimate Masters. And now I've seen the evolution of it. I've seen ever since we saw crazy exclusive variants pop up in the Mythic Edition. You know, Guilds of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance, and the War of the Spark Mythic Edition, those products and the blunder that they were on the Hasbro website, I just, like, I, I see it all coming together. And new players, you do need to know about this because if you're jumping in and you're like, oh my God, everybody's hyped on this product, uh, the pre-sale prices, you know, I talk in, in the review about the pre-sale prices on this, and I know that this is long-winded, but I like to, uh, I just have to get out what's in my mind so that you can assimilate it. Do with it what you will. Again, nothing here is financial advice, but I'm just going to say this. I'm not kicking myself for not buying this product for $420 or more. At this point, I'm like, attaboy, Jake, you fucking, you nailed that one, dude. At this point, I'm just like, okay, well, if Modern Horizons 2, the do-all, end-all, new, hot, modern cards, but also reprinting the Fetchlands, but also bringing back Urza and Force of Negation and the Swords and all of these powerful, awesome cards from Modern Horizons 1 in this special slot. Like, you've brought a culmination of just a massive amount of power, a well-designed set. I have drafted this set. I think this set is great. I like the madness mechanic. I like all of the Delirium stuff. I think the set is awesome from a limited standpoint. I had a great time. I think that the set offers a wide range of of wonderful new cards okay i really do and i'm already seeing modern get shaken up by it here's the thing though about the price is if you can put all of this power in here and then if you can also put the most coveted thing ever aka the enemy fetch lands which everybody's been going on about for geez it feels like years i mean it is years it is years at this point so now you've got them we got multiple new variants in this product 
and still I see the needle going down. Or let's see how low Arid got. Yeah, Arid Mesa down to 1895. I mean, that's pretty much close to my entry point. A fetch land for 20 bucks seems good. Oh yeah, because now we're at the point where the allied fetch lands need a reprint. Because now we have Polluted Delta lowest price from Kanza Tarkir's $35. Yeah, even when all of the fetch lands came back in Zendikar Rising, that should have been uh, kind of an indicator as well. With that collector product, a Zendikar Rising boost collector booster box. I just want to show you this before I talk about this point, and then we are going to talk about Secret Lair, and I'm going to move on from Modern Horizons too. Again, great product, wonderful design. All of that said, I'm bearish on the product, and I do think it's going to continue to go down in price, and it's just all of these variants, it's just too much. Before collector products, before the extended frame, we had judge promos, we had foils, we had non-foils. I mean, it was like pretty basic stuff. We had like crazy variants like the Elish Norn Brixian variant that would pop up every once in a blue moon. At this point, it's just, uh, it's a lot. And so for collectors and completionists, it's like nobody can really wrap their head around it. It's just, you know, buy what you want, buy what you're interested in. So here's a Zendikar Rising collector booster box. What you need to know about this is there are seated expeditions in each of these collector booster boxes you are going to find two seated non-foil expeditions they can be all the fetch lands there's speed lands in there there's cavern of souls there's ancient tomb wasteland there's some other really good stuff and these collector booster boxes are 207 dollars 68 now granted you're not going to pull any ragavans you're not pulling the modern horizons one cards you're not uh, pulling grief or subtlety or solitude or any of like the new mythics from modern horizons 2 but you do have a really good chance of pulling fetch lands in this product and you're pulling them in an expedition variant after the two seated packs and after you open all 12 packs you would normally have about four or five expeditions out of this product 10 of the expeditions total were all the fetch lands all fetch lands are represented in this product so it's honestly a really good product to get fetch lands and modal dual face cards which have proven to be really good in edh and eternal formats this product despite being you know way out of print out of sight out of mind it sits at 207 dollars and 68 cents on amazon probably in mass who the hell knows how many there are on here it's hard to tell you can't pull cavern of souls in modern horizons 2 you can't pull ancient tomb or wasteland in modern horizons 2 i'm just saying like i don't know any collector product in the future i would say don't buy it right out the gate most likely it's going to go lower and never ever forget what happened with modern horizons 2 which was as high as 420 dollars on amazon and is now almost a hundred dollars less if you had just waited so all of that said we have to go over here i have to go over to secret layer and we have to talk about these secret layer bonus cards and before we talk exactly about what these cards are and where they come from, just know current sale available until July 23rd, 2021. Normally this ends at like 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, but do your own research. The all natural, totally refreshing super drop consists of all of these products. I will link in the cards right now, a review that Joel and I did of this product. If you wanna go check that out, I'm not gonna dip into that too much. But just know that in this current sale, this is the information I'm about to talk about depending on when you watch this video. This is information that you 100% need to know before you buy this product because there are additional goodies that are tied to these cards uh, in addition to the value that is already represented by what's included within. So pretty big deal here. And I am going to link this Reddit post so that you can come back and look at this. If you wanna read through, you can get the community's response and everything that's going on in the comments yeah essentially these have been opened up on various channels and now we are seeing that within there is an eldrazi monument there are swift foot boots this is nothing that we've seen before this is like kind of like a sketch version that we're looking at here and again everything for this is going to be in the description if you want to come over here and read this yourself we also have eldrazi monument in what looks like kind of like a, a sketch version pretty big deal here creatures you control get plus one plus one and have flying and indestructible at the beginning of your upkeep sack a creature if you can't sacrifice eldrazi monument so a couple big things here one of the first ones is what this shows us is we are moving on from the stained glass planeswalkers that we saw for a very long time in the beginning of secret layer if you're just now joining the game when secret layer started i think it was right around 2019 was where we first saw that 
that super drop. Uh, correct me in the comments. I'm not going to look it up here in the moment. But it started right around all of the collector product stuff. Secret Layer was a big thing. And the way that Secret Layer works is you order a product that you know exactly what the cards are within it. However, there ends up being a secret card that we didn't know about that the com community starts sharing notes. They're like, oh, well, I bought Kaleidoscope Killers and I got a Teferi. Or I bought a Kaleidoscope Killers and I got a Nicol Bolas. Well, now we're seeing that they've moved on from that and we are seeing new cards instead of the stained glass planeswalkers. Some pretty interesting stuff in here. We do still see a what looks like a stained glass Sarkon, but also this is the jumpstart for Xeon Swamp. We also have Arcane Signet here. We also have an island, which is kind of kind of medium, and then a My Little Pony version of Crash Through. So let's go through here and talk about where uh, what cards are popping up in what secret layer because that's gonna probably inform what you wanna buy if you are still on the fence about the totally natural super drop. Looks like the Eldrazi Monument pops up in Mark Pool. Swiftfoot Boots is in the Gem Bartel. Really important information for you to know because this is additional value. This is additional value on these super drops. And one thing that's important about the totally natural super drop that I think must be brought up is the fact that um, this is the first time that we've seen equal prices across all of the drops. There is no uh, inflated price, for example, the Praetors. You're getting all five Praetors for $30 non-foil, $40 foil. People are gonna order a ton of it, and it's gonna tank the price of the cards, but the value out the gate before you buy it, before we see this correction, I mean, it's fantastic. It's just so much value for what you're purchasing. Here's the bonus cards, though. Um, updated list, we're still uncertain if all layers can get a blueprint style card and if certain blueprint cards are, are tied to specific layers. But here are the known bonus cards. And uh, yeah, we'll just kind of talk through this. The D&D layer has crashed through. The Signets has Arcane Signet, that makes sense. Praetors has the Jumpstart Foil Basic Phyrexian Swamp. Again, do your own research, come in through, through here, read all the comments. Uh, people are linking videos and stuff, so it really is best to do your own research. Staples, Stained Glass Walkers, Jaya or Sarkon, it looks like. Uh, Mother equals uh, Jumpstart Foil Basics. Theme, I think, is themes that start with M, Minotaur or Mill. Yeah, sometimes these have a theme, and that was one of the things. I opened seven Secret Layer Thassas chasing the Stained Glass Narset because we were able to deduce that Narset was one of the Stained Glass Planeswalkers that appeared in that product. So like what people are doing right here is they're trying to break down what appears where, they're watching a bunch of different videos. I think that this is probably a little bit calculated to help drive hype for this product. I would have to imagine that, you know, you send this out to different creators to generate FOMO, get people to start buying this. I mean, at this point, knowing that the Jumpstart Foil Basic Phyrexian Swamp or whatever comes in the Praetors, I mean, that's a pretty big deal. That Phyrexian Swamp, when that was spoiled in Jumpstart, a very coveted card. So there's going to be some people that really do spring for this. There's going to be some people that are, that are buying this product that weren't previously going to do it. At this point, it does light a little bit of a fire under my ass to, uh, make sure that now I do indeed get a couple versions of the Praetors. I would love to have that Phyrexian Swamp, for example, in my blue black mill deck in modern. So yeah, I, I mean, I think this is pretty interesting. Again, come over here. I'm going to link this in the description of the video. I hope you've enjoyed this update on MTG Finance. We've talked a little bit about Modern Horizons 2. You can let me know in the comments. Jake, you were hurting my livelihood. The one guy who was like, I'm outraged. I'm outraged. I'm, I mean, I'm sorry, guy. I'm sorry that I didn't say what you wanted to hear, but he was so mad. He was so mad that I, I didn't give the collector product a good review. And I mean, I'm not always going to do that. I think that the price is getting closer to where I'm ready to jump in. But I think we've all seen on some of these bigger channels, somebody open a collector booster and they get like one fetch land. And I'm not saying there isn't other value to be had in there, but when you're cracking a product, trying to find fetch lands, I almost want to go with the Zendikar Rising. Just saying, just my thoughts. If fetch lands are the goal, I think there are better ways to do it. Definitely those draft boxes, keep an eye on those. Keep an eye on those Modern Horizons 2 set boxes. Those are looking really nice too as we get closer to that sub 200. 
based on this window of time, you know, it's July 11th. I think that we could even see a bigger correction downward for fetch lands. I think that, you know, uh, I'm not buying that $32 scalding tarn. It was a new listing. Maybe somebody's bought it by now. Good for them. But I do think that we could see these fetch lands continue to go lower. Until next time, I'm Jake with Jake and Joel Magic. I will talk to you later. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm tapped out.